Hi everyone, welcome. It's Monday night. It's Marketplace and Prophetic and I'm trusting tonight it's going to be a good evening and I really always wait on the Lord to see what the Lord wants to do and what he wants to say. And So tonight um, is uh, the message tonight is looking into the mirror of 2021. Let me open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you Lord tonight that you're a loving Father and a loving God and Lord, I lift up every single person under my voice today. I thank you, Lord, that you are working everything for their good. And we can trust you, Lord, to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever wish or ask. Lord, as we look into the mirror of 2021, Lord, we would see the reflection that you have for us. I just thank you for that tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, please let me know where you're calling from. I always, uh, it's always good for me. I just want to check if we are on Facebook. I always check to see if we're live. Otherwise, we sometimes don't even know we're live. Yes, we are live. Please let me know where you're calling, watching from. I really appreciate it. Um, not that I, 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 I know that there are people watching, but it's always good to know who's watching. And lovely to see some friends We're all over that uh, watch with us. And, Tonight I'm going to talk to a, a subject of looking into the mirror of 2021. And I felt the Lord giving me a message calling the a time to reflect and a time to respond. So tonight we're going to talk about a time to reflect and a time to... You know, it's nearly the end of the year. The, when we In Wednesday it becomes the 1st of the, December again. And we can say we're virtually at the end of the year. And it's been a tough year for every single person. We ride the roller coaster of COVID-19. Who knows tomorrow what COVID-19 brings? Uh, uh, you know, we have a now another wave in South Africa. So we don't know where we are with it. So we're waiting to see how it's going to affect us. So 2021 has really been a, a up and down here uh, for many of us. Some of it's been fine. Some of it's been for us. We, we never know where we are. And um, so I really found that so the Lord's saying it's a time to, uh, as we wind down, it's a time to reflect and to respond. In Proverbs 27, 19, it says, As in water face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects the man. So that's quite an interesting scripture. And then in Haggai 1, 5 to 9 says, Now therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. <clears throat> you have sown much and bring little, and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but you're not. no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a big bag with holes. Well, sometimes that uh, means, uh, that sometimes that scripture means a lot to other, many people today that they, 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 they just go to work. I, I always say that thing is, um, off, uh, what's it, to work I go, off I work to go because I owe, you know, <clears throat> so I don't know, I can't remember that one, so, so I think the purpose, we're going to have a look at the purpose of reflection, reflection is the most important, you see, the word of God is all about reflecting and responding, the whole word of God is God giving us stories about different scenarios about life, and then God is wanting us to reflect on how those stories impact our lives, and how they can change and then, obviously, how we respond to it. I love the Old Testament. It's got such wonderful stories. And, and there's a story for every single situation you face. There's not a sto story there that God hasn't got for you that won't help you in your situation. But God is only saying, well, we need to read these stories because it's a reflection to us to show us what's happening in our life. And the question is always, how are we going to respond? You see... We, when we look into the, into God's mirror of life, now um, it always reflects truth. You know, um, you know when we um, when we look in, uh, you see, when we honestly assess our lives, both spiritually and naturally, which we're going to have a look at tonight, it will reflect back to us where we, what we, what we, how, what what we've done and how what we need to do, and you know, our mirror. If you look in our mirror, that's why I've said God's mirror. If we look in our mirror, our mirror can be pretty distorted. And I always remember in the olden days in Durban, you used to go to those mirrors. You used to see them on the beachfront. 
and you look in the mirror and you're like skinny, 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 or you're like large, large, large. Um, who can remember those those days of those mirrors? They were so interesting. Some of them made you look funny, and and um, but that's how sometimes when we look through our own mirror, we our mirror is it can be distorted through self deception. You can look through your mirror and think you've done wonderful, but if you look through God's mirror, He might be challenging you tonight. Or we might be looking through our mirror and think we've done badly. But when we look through God's mirror, he might be very well pleased with us. So self-deception is the worst thing we can have. And that's why we always need to look at the, through the mirror of God's word. What does God's word say about us? And then how does our life reflect against that? And God is always calling for a response. He's, he's always out there. His Holy Spirit's always helping us. And he's wanting us to respond. He wants us to respond in faith. He wants us to respond in action. And um, so um, what we want to talk about tonight, uh, see where and see where you are and what you are in our lives. We're going to have a look at our lives through the word of God tonight. And we're going to have a look at where we are and what, 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 what we're going to do. And um, it's normally a personal introspection. I think personal introspection is good. You can over-introspect. I tend to be somebody that um, always is introspective because I'd like to always measure myself and ask the Lord to show me where I'm at and so I can be truthful with myself. Um, it can be a good thing because it's always good to introspect, but it also can be a bad thing if we negatively introspect all of the time and then we allow the enemy to lie to us <clears throat> and it brings us into condemnations. But you know, in all introspective in anything, when we when we have a reflection, we need to be honest with ourselves. That's the greatest thing. Um, um, the, 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 the Bible says the heart of man is the most deceitful thing of all things. So we need to be really honest. And when we reflect on 2021, we need to really be honest with ourselves. <clears throat> and um, the, in, in, in the scripture, it says, consider our ways. And we're going to look at three ways we need to consider our ways. Um, first of all, our ways with the Lord, our hearts, and the ways, our ways in the marketplace. So responding correctly is the most important thing you can do. You know, uh, uh, the, uh, the Bible says there's no, the, there's no um, condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And so there's normally the Holy Spirit just brings conviction. He doesn't bring condemnation. So if you're feeling condemned tonight, then you must know that's the enemy and it's not uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to bring conviction because why? He wants to bring us into change and we're going to talk about it. So let's have a look at what the dictionary says about responding. Um, so it's it's used with, uh, without the object. It's to reply or answer in words. It's to spron respond briefly to a question, to make a return by some action as if in answer to respond generously to, to a charity drive. So responding is something that we have to do. And, um, and so we, we need to answer a couple of things. You know, Lord, am I willing to respond tonight? So that's the first question we're going to have to ask ourselves. Are we willing to respond tonight? Okay, because if you're not willing to respond um, no change will ever take place in your life because responding to the Word of God and responding to the leading of the Holy Spirit is the most important thing any one of us can do. I, I spend many, many years really seeking the Lord. And even today, if I see myself not behaving in a way that I believe was uh, right before God, I would seek the Lord and ask Him to show me what has found a hiding place in me that I can make the changes that is necessary. And so... We need to respond tonight to respond with a question, Lord, what are you saying? So as we as we reflect, the question we need to ask when we're responding is, Lord, what are you saying? That's the most important. You know, um, the Holy Spirit is always so wonderful. He's so kind to us. He's gentle. But he will always bring us in to, into truth because he's the spirit of truth and and obviously, we need to respond with action. Lord, what do we need to do? And then we also need to respond generously. Lord, how do I need to give? 
Now, you know, when we talk about giving, we always talk about finances. Some people always think money when you just hear that. No, with this many things we can give. We can give love. We can give kindness. We can, uh, we can give finances. We can give time. There's many things we as, as believers can give. And that's important, as we need to say. And tonight it's time to say yes to God. All right, so we're going to have a look at some of the things, three areas we spoke about um, of how we... What is God is calling us? And the word in Ephesians 4.20 says, it said, put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Well, so tonight God is saying to us what he wants us to reflect, to see what do we need to put off and what do we need to put on? Ah, that's a very good question. And only the Lord knows everything about it, okay? And so we're going to look at three of the three errors. So the first one is time to reflect our ways with God. Now, the question is, we have to, first one, we have to, when we look in the mirror, we ask, we need to ask ourselves, who have we become? That's a very good question. Who have we become? Many times... We have become somebody we actually don't like. I remember many times, many years in my life, many years ago, I was going through a very difficult time. I wasn't born again at the time. I, I was I, I was going through a divorce, and it was an extremely difficult time. And I used to look at myself in the mirror and dislike myself. And um, many there tonight, maybe you're looking in the mirror and you're disliking yourself. You must know that that's not from God. That is from the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to see yourself worse than you are. God is a good God and he always looks at our potential. He doesn't look at our failures. Um, he wants us to see what changes we need to know. So the question, first question is, all right, who have we become? Have you have you lost yourself to the world that you no longer can see yourself as a, as, as a victorious Christian? Have you lost your walk with the Lord? As 2020, 2021 brought so many difficulties that you've lost your fire for God. You were once on fire for God. Now it's a time to reflect back and to have a look and say, God, now it's my time to really to come back in a response and say, God, I'm going to come back to you. And there's no condemnation for those. And many of us went through difficulties. We'll fall away uh, or we'll, we'll, our, our love for Jesus grows cold. But tonight the Lord is saying, you can come back and uh, the Lord wants you to spend time with him. So the question is, God wants to reflect tonight and ask you to reflect. Do you spend time with the Lord? Okay, that's the next question. And you know, the Lord is wonderful. He always asks questions. I know he asks me questions. And uh, I know it's the Lord when I get questions because um, he always asks me in questions. I, I think in 2019, I think it was just before the COVID, the Lord asked me three questions. I was quite in quite pertinent questions he asked me first of all he said can you believe me for the impossible and then he asked me the next question can you walk can you seek me in everything you do and the next question he said can you shake off the world and walk in the spirit well that's a lifetime goal uh, for all of us as when we answer those questions so the lord is asking us a question tonight are we obedient to the word and are we willing to make some internal changes? So this is the thing we need to reflect about. Are, are we obedient to the word? And are we willing to make changes? This is not a harsh message. This is a message that's uh, for every one of us to make the changes. Um, and, and time to respond, you see. Um, and I ask the Lord, how do you want me to change? The Lord will show you. Holy Spirit knows everything about us. And he wants us to be victorious and he sees the things that keep us back and hold us back and keep us from achieving all that he's called us to, to do. And so the Lord wants to know from us tonight, we need to ask him, Lord, show me what do I need to change? And are you willing to make sacrifices and spend time with God? Listen, spending time with Lord is uh, in prayer is uh, something you have to make a sacrifice. It's not something that comes easy. It's much easier. I love that we are... Uh, 
Janet and I love watching sport and football. We, we, I'm a Tottenham supporter. And uh, it's a lot easier for me to sit and watch football than it is for me to take time and pray. But we need to make that time and pray. Because when we make that time and pray, God is a God that um, answers us. And we, as we build a relationship with Him, you'll be surprised at what the Lord wants to show you. The, the revelation he'll give you in your own life, your revelation of your circumstances. So are we willing to make some internal changes? You know, those are the most important things. We're always looking for external changes, but God is asking us to, are we willing to make some internal changes? Um, you know, remember, everything starts, first of all, in our hearts. And we spoke about it last week. And so tonight, it's a time to reflect about our hearts. And we spoke about the different heart conditions last week. So tonight, the Lord is asking each one of us, what is the condition of our heart? Has our heart become so hard? Have we, have we got a hard heart that we've allowed the bitterness and resentment and the, the, the bad things of 2021 to come in and affect our hearts that no longer are we kind to people, no longer can we see the good in people? Um, you know, the other other morning I was praying and the Lord woke me up. Um, I, 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 it was just one of those amazing things. Uh, at one o'clock I woke up and I felt the Lord saying, I want you to, the Lord said to me, I want you to come and pray. So I got, so I decided about by 10 past one, I decided what well, I better get up because I'm not going to sleep. So I'm, I'm going to get up. So I got up and as I was getting up, at one is 17 exactly. I got a message, and it was from a, my, one of my ladies that works for me. She's, she looks after all the buying and everything. She's been with me for over 20 years. She'd gone in to a hospital, and um, she'd had an operation, and she was at home again. At 1.17, I got a message to say, please, will you pray? She's being rushed to hospital. Um, she's got a problem with her stomach again. So it was just the Lord waking me up. And for the first time, I didn't turn my sound off. I had my sound on. So at 1.17, I could be praying. You know, we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Always we're willing to get up when He wakes us up, you know. And um, so God is asking you, has your heart become hard? Have you, do you look at people with um, disdain and would you see the goodness? Um, you know, uh, the other, that morning I was praying and the Lord gave me a very good, uh, a very something. He said, he was, I was praying about somebody and He said, they, they are... Um, they become, uh, I just want to get it right, okay. Uh, they become too knowledgeable in their own eyes that they cannot see the value in other people. So that's what pride does. You become too knowledgeable in your own eyes that you cannot see the value in other people. So I've journaled, journaled it and I'll post it one of these days. And, and um, where has our heart been filled with unbelief when we've come through this 2021 and we've seen ups and downs and things haven't really worked out the way we wanted it and we were full of confidence in starting to think yes 2021 and we turn the corner no more COVID and now all of a sudden COVID hits and we're back again and now are our hearts full of unbelief or are we going to ask the Lord are we going to have time to reflect and say God do I have it have, has unbelief crept into my heart? And then, do we have an offended heart? Has somebody offended us? Okay, it's an um, offended heart is what the enemy uses to drive a wedge between us and people, to bring us out of churches, to bring us out of businesses, and bring us out of the, to really cause us to live less um, as an offended heart. And so tonight is a time to respond to our hearts, okay? What is our response? Tonight, we, the Lord is asking, what is your response? If you have a hard heart, are you prepared to come to the Lord? Are you prepared to bring your heart to the Lord? Does your heart become full of unbelief? Are you going to bring it to the Lord tonight? And if your heart has been offended, are you going to give that offended heart to the Lord? You see, in the Bible, repent, repentance is the only answer. It's a wonderful thing. God made a wonderful way. If we come and repent and ask Him to forgive us for having these having the wrong heart, and especially in the marketplace. We need the right heart in the marketplace. And um, when we've got the wrong heart in the marketplace, we need to ask God to help us repent and ask God to give us, ask Him for an obedient and a surrendered heart. 
God wants us to have an obedient heart and a surrendered heart so that he can lead us and guide us into victory, that we never have to worry about failure. Uh, because when we walk with Jesus, when we're walking with Jesus and we're talking with Jesus and Jesus is, and the Holy Spirit is and lead us and guide us, we'll never be caught unawares. God will always warn us. He warns us in advance. I mean, they woke me up at one. They woke me up at one o'clock, and at one seventeen, I got a message. And I could pray really earnestly. I could intercede for this lady. Really felt the spirit of death was coming against her, and I could re, uh, really intercede for her. And uh, so she came through the night. Praise God! So it's a wonderful testimony of God waking us up for the right reasons. And so the condition of a heart is very, very important. How you respond to people will be according to what is in your heart. So God wants us to have a look at it, to look at, have a, take a good reflect, reflect in our heart. What kind of condition is our heart? And then to respond in the right way. God wants us to respond in the right way. Okay. And then we're going to talk about the time to reflect our ways in the market. Well, I want to tell you the marketplace is no place like any other. It can put you under so much pressure. It can force you into anxiety. It can give you sleepless nights. It can cause you to have a headache when you shouldn't have headaches. Who knows in the marketplace, it's the one place. It is the, it is, it is the playground of the enemy because he loves to use the marketplace and he will put us under so much pressure that um, we no longer can see God. And I think what we need to do is tonight is a time to reflect. Um, and you can always play this message again with and a time to reflect. Um, when people look at us, do they see the character of Christ? That's the first question we need to do. Now, there's no condemnation in that. I also fail as much as I try, I fail. But, you know, I've always learned to say if I've made a mistake, I've I always go and say, please forgive me, and I put right. So we need to make right when, when we've done wrong. God wants, God is a God, and Jesus is a spirit of reconciliation and restoration. We were very privileged on Sunday to be able to pray with the family and to bring restoration and reconciliation where there was division. And God, the spirit of Christ, is always a reconciliation. And, you know, one of the questions we need, do we represent Jesus correctly? You know, do you talk like Jesus? Um, you know, do you behave like Jesus? And I know it's a, it's a very uh, tough question. This is a power time to reflect. Okay. Can you honestly say that, uh, that uh, we represent Christ correctly? And, then, and how have we behaved to others, towards others? You know, Jesus was very clear. He said to, when he gave us a scripture, he asked him, you know, they asked him, which of the commandments are the most important in the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, to love thy God with all the heart, with all thy soul, and all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. So I want everyone to know tonight, the marketplace is the one place where God is asking you to love others. You will know, the Bible says we'll know them by their fruit. It's how we respond and love others through difficult situations. And, and as I said, the marketplace is the one place that you are stressed and strained. You've got deadlines. You've got all things. You've got bosses. You've got, you've got customers. You've got suppliers. You've got stuff that doesn't come in. It's supposed to. You've got uh, uh, things to do. And it puts us under pressure. And um, you only know what's in you when you're really under pressure. When the pawpaw hits the fan, you'll know what comes out of it. Okay, And so, how do we behave towards others? And that will be determined in your heart. So that's why I spoke about the heart. I think that the Lord spoke about the heart first. Because if you're offended heart, you will not deal decently with others. You will not have the, the ability to work nicely and speak. I always say, when you hear somebody's mouth go, <laughs> You know that they, there's normally something in the heart. Normally there's bitterness and resentment because God never gave us a mouth that is caustic and a mouth that is nasty and a mouth that... There's normally 
find that there's something hidden in, in the heart that would cause you to speak like that. And I, I mean, I go back in my years, I think if my staff look at back at me and I look at back at myself, um, I, I would really say I wasn't a very nice person. I certainly wasn't a nice boss. I certainly, though I had, I had the Jesus sticker, I had all of those things, I definitely didn't behave like that. But as time has gone over, and I just want everybody to hear, um, this is not a, I wish it was a magic wand we could just run, or, uh, run or, you know, wish it a wand and all of a sudden everything will be fine. Now this is a process, God changing us into his image. And we can change little by little. So I just want to encourage you that we, God is in the process of changing each one of us when we are prepared to reflect our lives and to respond to what he's saying. And so one of the things that I've always done has been always willing to reflect what I've what I've done and repent and ask God to forgive me. Many times I've had to repent over and over and over and over until I eventually got it. Now sometimes we can be quite slow. I've been slow at times to catch what God was saying. And uh, so he's had to really um, do some work in me. And so my staff can really say today that the boss they had 10 years ago doesn't exist anymore. They have a new new boss and they're going to have another they're going to even have a better one in the future why because christ is conforming me to his image and uh, we need to love people we need to have a, a love for people the people that work for us and um, as i said um, as i said the lord showed me that this person was um uh, he was wise uh, too knowledgeable in his own eyes that he could not see the value in others so if this is meaning to you, that means pride has puffed you up that you no longer can see the value in others. God wants us to see the value in others. And then um, obviously the question is, um, do we walk the word? You know, are we walking the word? And I mean, there's a lot to walk in the word. I mean, um, even, even Jesus said, you, can't, you will never be able to keep every scripture. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need repentance, because if we had to keep every letter of the law, we'd fail on, even if we failed on one, we failed. And that's why we need the blood of Jesus, the power of the cross that came to save us, set us free from sin. And uh, are we dealing honestly in our workplace? Honesty is a very important thing in a workplace. We need to deal honestly. Um, you know, um, and that comes from inside of you. Nobody can make you be honest. You have to have make a decision to be honest, um, I was speaking to somebody uh, the other day, they came to do some work and I said, you know, if you want to be a person of excellence, you've got to make that internal change. It comes from within, it doesn't come from without. And so if you want to have honest dealings, you've got to ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to show you where you where you miss it. And now it's your time to respond. Are you willing to make the changes needed? We all, 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 we've all missed it. I mean, if I go back in my life, I've most probably missed it more than most people. Okay? And God really had to work with me. It's taken a long time. And I'm not even there yet, as Joyce Meyer said. Uh, I, I'm, not where I, I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not where I need to be. And uh, so are we willing to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to change? The Holy Spirit is our greatest comforter. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He's the one that helps us. So ask Him. Ask Him, Holy Spirit, Help me to change. You know, I've got this bad habit, or I've got this sin, I've got this problem, or I'm not nice to people, or, you know, I, I, the things I want to do, like Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. And uh, I, I used to repent so many times, I can't even tell you. And uh, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us change. And what can we do to treat people with love? Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what can you do differently. How can you respond differently to people? When they when they're difficult, you know, can you see, can you see the hurt instead of seeing their problem? Okay, and are we prepared to repent for wrong dealings and deal honestly? Those are the most important things. If we can do deal deal honestly, um, people need to know that as Christians we are honest people. We are faithful. We tell the truth. We don't lie to cover up. You know, if somebody says, "Well, it's just a white lie." Well, I've got to tell you, a lie is a lie in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says lies will not inherit uh, the kingdom of God. A lie is a lie. So get out of a habit of telling a white lie. And then obviously in conclusion, 
if we never reflect, we'll never know what we need to change. So before you go into this holiday, you know, we all go on holiday, and most of us in South Africa, and the 15th of December, we pack up and we go on holiday. A lot of us do. Uh, schools close, all kinds of things close, and off we go. And we forget all about work. So this is the time between holiday and now. Make a time to reflect and respond. Very important. And uh, remember, the only thing that's constant in life is change. And change for the good when it comes from God. So God is always changing us for the good. Are you willing to make the changes? Are you willing to look in the mirror of the Word of God and prepare to respond and make the changes that you need? Don't wait until a New Year's resolution, and we'll talk about it later. New Year's, New, New Year's resolutions, they're just like wishful thinking. We'll talk about setting goals. And uh, Remember, the enemy wants you to remain where you are, oblivious of the issues that affect your life. So you can only have revelation when you ask the Holy Spirit because he will transcend what, transcend what the enemy is trying to keep you back on. And when we respond to the Holy Spirit, we will begin to live a powerful life. God doesn't want to live us to live powerless. He wants us to live as powerful people. God has called us to, to have dominion and have authority in the Spirit. He wants us to be powerful people. He doesn't want us to live a life of defeated. And Jesus loves us and he wants us to have a victorious life. The Bible is full of stories. God trying to get us to walk in a way. Jesus came to bring us into victory. All right? And um, so tonight, make a great decision to reflect and to respond in the next season. And remember, it becomes, you need to make it a lifestyle. A lifestyle, a lifestyle of reflecting and a lifestyle responding to the kingdom of God and responding to the word of God. And so tonight I felt that the Lord was asking some challenging questions. So to many that would be challenging questions. And how are we going to respond will be how our lives will be changing in the days ahead. That's your choice tonight. That's why the Bible says, God says, I put before you life or death. Choose life. Okay. So tonight, choose to respond. Choose to reflect. Choose to respond correctly. And then I saw a picture of a, and I was praying as I was preparing for tonight. I saw a picture of a baller, like a ballerina. Okay. And um, it's a, I saw it, and it's, it's a, for somebody out there. Um, and it's like you're not achieving anything, like you're dancing around your situation. And it's time for you to remove the shoes and to get your feet back on solid ground. Um, and as you stand on the promises of God, you will see the, your whole situation change. It's like you skipping over stuff like with ballerina shoes and God says, take them off and get your feet onto solid ground. Get the word of God and start to know that God is going to change things for you. And then for Daryl, and I felt the Lord asking Daryl, why do you doubt me? Why do you look at your circumstances and they become bigger than me? And the Lord is saying to you now, Daryl, and that means to many others, look at the skies. Look how awesome they are. Just look at the heavens and you will get the right perspective of who God is. Amen. And someone, I saw you have a, a, a problem with your right toenail, on your right foot. There's a toenail on your right foot, sorry. As I pray, I felt the Lord saying, you have a problem on your right foot with a toenail. I don't know if it's an ingrown toenail, if it's grown skew, what it is, and it's painful. And the Lord is saying tonight that he's healing your toenail tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now. You touch that toenail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I mean, why a toenail? Why not, you know, like uh, cancer, liver? I don't know. God is kind of saying, well, to him, even a toenail is important, all right? And so even in our life, every little thing in our lives is important to the Lord. Is that what I'm saying? Why well, to toenail, Lord? Okay. And... Um, so I just want to go through, I make. I always make notes of what I've prayed about and ask the Lord. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I'm just 
getting to page, turn this page, okay, and um, all right. And then I saw somebody that they were baking this weekend, and they haven't baked for a very, very long time. And um, I really felt the Lord saying that. And if it's you that you've been baking this weekend and you haven't been baking, please let me know, okay? And um, the Lord is saying to you um, that there are many things that you haven't done. This baking is just a small little tip of all the things that you haven't done for a long time because it's like your, your life has been on hold, okay? And the Lord wants to bring, as you brought life in your baking this weekend, God wants to re-bring re freedom and healing in your life. No longer will you be stuck in the past um, as this step of baking. You did this, God is saying to you that that's a step that of many things that you never did before that you're going to start doing again. And then I saw um, a whole lot of walls and barriers and I felt the Lord saying that... Uh, these are the walls and the barriers that have contained have con and, and have contained you. And as you start to speak the word of God and declare the promises, you will see the barriers removed and the walls broken down. And you will uh, uh, know that you'll be able to walk in the promises of God. You've set barriers. You've allowed the enemy to set barriers and walls up. God is saying, speak to those walls and speak to them. And you'll see that they will come down in the name of Jesus. And I saw somebody that um, it looks like that everything looks so big and so challenging. And that's how you see your future. It's like a river, this large, I saw this picture of this large, large river. And it was like you're looking at this river and you're thinking, God, this, this is my future. It looks so large. It looks so challenging. I don't know if I could even get over this river. And the Lord is saying to you, just get in and float and allow him to take you where he wants to take you. And when you do that, you will have a new future for 2022. God is saying to many of you, just jump in. And sometimes you might be saying, how do you jump, jump in? Well, you jump in by trusting the Lord. You trust the Lord. You just get in and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And then for sorrow, 2020, 2022 is going to be your year of freedom. Everything and everything that you've ever wanted is now coming, um, is going to come to pass. All the past tonight is falling off you in the name of Jesus. And you're going to enter into a greater freedom for 2022. 22 and um, and then for Bernice I saw a bright bright star it was like the star um, in the Bible with Jesus when it, it led the, uh, the the wise men the star uh, that led the white men to Jesus and the Lord is saying to you let that star lead you and guide you just like it led the people to Jesus let that star tonight lead you to Jesus and lead you to the place where of promise. God is going to lead you to the place of promise if you allow him to lead you. And um, you know many times we don't we don't want the Lord to lead us. We want to lead ourselves, but the Lord wants to lead us, but it comes to a place of surrender. And then the last thing, I saw somebody that God wants to heal your left eardrum. It hasn't been functioning properly. It's been impaired. And tonight I speak healing over your eardrum in the name of Jesus. We command it to be healed and opened in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, right now, whoever it is, Lord, that this healing has come right now, that they can hear right now in Jesus' mighty name. Well, that's the end of tonight. And um, I really feel that uh, to share with you, we have a wonderful guest next um, next week. We, we have been very privileged to have Oz Hillman come on. And we've interviewed him and we'll be broadcasting that uh, message next week. It's all about, uh, the message will be about um, how God uses all the difficulties of, of, of our lives um, to bring us into fruitfulness and um, all those difficulties. So it's a good message to listen to. He's a, a great man of God. He's, 
most probably written most more books than anybody else about the marketplace and it's one of the very first pioneers about having a marketplace ministry and God wanting to use us in the marketplace. So look forward to next week and then we've only got one more week after that because on the the 13th of December will be our last week. Um, then uh, uh, Janet and I will go for our break, our December break. Uh, the business closes, the ministry closes, and we start again in January. So that's what I'm saying. We've only got a couple of weeks left. So now it's your time to reflect and to respond. This is not a harsh message. Jesus loves us too much to leave us where we are. But he wants us to reflect on 2021. Have a good look at it. Um, not through your mirror, because I said your mirror can be, can, can be completely wrong, but look at it through God's mirror. And when you look at it through God's, make a decision. Before you go on holiday, before you get into that relaxing mood for the holiday, okay, or before Christmas and New Year, start to already respond, think uh, and re re reflect and respond to see, God, how am I going to respond to what you're saying to me? Show me where I need to make the changes and help me to show me how to respond to what the message you have to us. Well, I hope tonight has been uh, 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 not too challenging for you. Uh, I always like to be challenged. I like to be challenged to grow in the things of God. I like to be challenged to become more and more like Christ. And I trust that that's a, the wish of every Christian, that we should become more like Christ. When we do that, uh, we will see God come through supernaturally, in every area of our life. So look forward to seeing you next week. Trust you're going to have a wonderful time with Oz Hillman. And uh, we look forward to next week with anticipation that you're going to learn what, how God uses all these difficulties in our lives. And he turns it for our good. Amen. Bye, everyone.